According to insurance industry research, 14,000 people in the U.S. alone experience a water damage emergency at work or home each day. The average home insurance claim for water damage is over $11,000. So what could possibly be a better use of smart home technology than something that could actually save your home from damage and those costly repairs? Today we're going to talk about smart water shutoff valves and specifically what options we have for integrating those into our home kit smart homes. Let's go! Sponsored by Eve. Yo, what's going on? Thanks for joining me today. My name is Shane, if you're new here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit, with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. 14,000 people in the US experiencing water damage every day? That's crazy. 37% of US homeowners claim to have suffered losses from water damage already, and 98% of basements 98% in the US will suffer some type of water damage during their lifetime. So those numbers are just crazy. Water damage can obviously end up costing thousands of dollars in repair. And the thing is, these water emergencies often cause a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. So being able to catch leaks and shut off the water quickly becomes very important in avoiding serious water damage and those costly repairs. But until recently, there really hasn't been any options that support HomeKit natively. And that's the key word here, natively. There are some workaround options using HomeBridge or Hoobs, but of course, that means you're adding products that haven't been officially HomeKit certified, which is fine. I will discuss some of these options later in this video in case you're interested, but I'm always a fan of native home kit support whenever it's possible and now it's possible when it comes to water shutoff valves now you might be asking why would you even care about home kit support for something like a water shutoff valve and I'm glad you asked uh, to me the answer is automation there's already a number of home kit water sensors out there on the market that can detect water leaks and give you notification alerts like the Eve water guard pair that with a device that can actually shut the water off when a leak is detected and boom, you may have just saved yourself thousands of dollars in water damage and countless headaches without having to lift a finger. On top of that, you can automate other things like lights flashing or an alert on your HomePod when a leak is detected. If you're looking for a good HomeKit water sensor, that Eve WaterGuard is one of my favorites. Big thanks to Eve for sponsoring today's video. The WaterGuard has a long 6.5 foot extendable water sensing cable with a 100 decibel siren and visual alert built in. I love this long cable because it allows you to monitor larger areas than you know a lot of other water sensors. For example, I've been using one under my kitchen sink for a long time and I run the cable under the kitchen sink and all the way down to my dishwasher so it can actually detect leaks under both my sink and my dishwasher area all with one sensor. And this has actually detected leaks and notified me in the past, allowing me to take action before any serious water damage took place. It supports thread and of course it works great in HomeKit. Eve makes a number of great privacy focused HomeKit products and they're one of the leading companies right now making products that support HomeKit over thread. Just just like the Eve Water Guard. I've been a big fan of their products for a long time and they're definitely worth taking a look at if you're a home kit enthusiast. Check out the link below for that Eve Water Guard and other great home kit products by Eve. If you get an Eve Water Guard or any home kit water sensor and you set up a water shutoff valve in home kit like we're about to talk about, you can create an automation that says when that water sensor detects a leak, instantly shut off the main water to your entire house and you'll immediately get a notification sent to your phone. And that's exactly what I've done in my setup and really gives me just great peace of mind knowing that I'll likely be able to avoid any major water related emergencies. You can put home kit water sensors throughout your entire house, you know, in areas that are more prone to leaking like, um, you know, around toilets, bathtubs, sinks, washing machines, wherever you want in the basement. And then of course, when those water sensors detect a leak, it will automatically shut off the water to your house. 
So let's talk about getting that water shutoff valve into HomeKit. There are two methods that I've discovered and tried personally that are officially supported in HomeKit. The first is a Z-Wave water shutoff valve and I'm able to get this into HomeKit natively using something called the Thinka Z-Wave HomeKit Hub. Now, a couple of things about this solution. First, the Thinka Hub is still not available in the US. It's currently available in Europe right now. It was sent to me early for testing and I've been experimenting using it to bring in various Z-Wave products into HomeKit. I'll share more about that hub here on the channel once it does become officially available in the US, which should be later this year. Uh, but be warned, it's quite expensive, coming in at 355 pounds in Europe and will likely be pretty expensive once it's available in the US also. But with this, I can essentially add any Z-Wave product to HomeKit natively including this Z-Wave Econet Bulldog water shutoff valve. Now, this shutoff valve isn't cheap either, costing over $250 US by itself. So this paired with that Thinka Hub, and you're looking at probably well over $600 for this native HomeKit solution. And then recently, I discovered this little Zigbee shutoff valve by Zimmysmart. Now, you guys might remember a video I did a few weeks back where we talked about the Zimmysmart HomeKit bridge and and the many products that it can actually integrate into HomeKit natively. Uh, that is a Zigbee bridge. I'll drop a link to that video below. Much to my surprise, I found this Zigbee water shutoff valve on the Zimmy Smart website that can be paired to their Zigbee HomeKit bridge. And this bridge is much cheaper at only $50 to $60, and the shutoff valve itself was only about $40. So this solution is much cheaper than the previous. That said, I'm sure even here on camera, it's probably not too hard to tell the difference in build quality here between between the two, you can see uh, this one, a little more premium. Obviously the mount seems to be a lot nicer than the mount on this one. Uh, plus this one has a longer arm and longer screws, which may be needed. So we'll see. <laughs> the concept on both is pretty much the same. You install the little robot motor on the pipe or if possible on the valve collar you know would be better using whatever mount or clamp that it comes with i definitely like the clamp on the bulldog much more it's definitely more premium the zimmy smart one on the other hand it just comes with a basic hose clamp but at a fraction of the price maybe it's good enough you attach the motor assembly to the clamp and align the pivot points of the valve and the robot so that they are centered Tighten the little screw pins against the valve handle, and that's about it for the manual installation. You will have to plug in the device somewhere, so keep in mind you'll need an outlet or an extension cord nearby. Now each will have slightly different methods of adding them to their bridge, but once you successfully do that, they should appear in HomeKit automatically, assuming you have already added the bridge to your HomeKit setup. In HomeKit, they're pretty similar. The Bulldog can show up as a switch, outlet, fan, or a light, and the Zimmy Smart shows up as either a fan, outlet, or a light. Really don't have much else in HomeKit as far as controls or options, but as you can see, both are showing up as natively supported products. So you're not seeing that accessory, you know, has not been certified message that you'd see with a HomeBridge solution or something like that. The only other configurable option is for the Zimmy Smart one inside the Toya app, which is the app that the Zimmy Smart Hub uses. And here you have the option to change the restart status to either off, on, or same as the last status. Now this is what happens when the device loses power and then the power comes back on, which is probably something you might wanna consider when we're talking about shutting off the water to your entire house. So far you can't configure that on the Bulldog from what I can tell, but in my testing it will maintain the last status if it loses power and I imagine that's probably what you want. They both react in HomeKit very fast, one being a Z-Wave and the other one being a Zigbee device. That I'd expect, but as you can see the Zimmy Smart Valve actually opens and closes much faster. The Bulldog takes about 18 seconds to go from open to close. Now the big factor here, if you are considering one of these type of water shutoff valves is probably gonna be the torque. Torque is the measurement of the force which causes something to rotate around a point. 
It didn't take me too much testing to determine pretty quickly that the Zemi Smart shutoff valve just doesn't quite have enough torque to close and open my valve all the way. After trying and mounting it and modifying it and remounting it several times, I think I've come to the conclusion that this water shutoff valve robot just isn't gonna work. Uh, here, let me just show you. So uh, a couple things, like I said, not crazy around uh, way, the way this mounts. I tried right here and no luck, it still moved. Moved up here and I really don't like having the mount directly on the pipe like that. Um, I've seen this done a lot, so I assumed it was okay to do, but I just don't like doing that. Not enough torque in this thing to move this handle all the way and back. And then plus it moves, again, that mount not being as great as I'd like it to be. So if we turn it off, you'll see it doesn't move much because it's up against the wall here, but it hits that point there every time where it gets stuck. And I think that means it just doesn't have enough torque to finish that off right there. And then kind of same thing when I open it back up You'll see that mount actually move, which I don't like. And same thing here. It's clearly not all the way open and it kind of gets stuck. And uh, yeah, so that's what we got. The Bulldog on the other hand didn't have any issues with this at all. A few moments later. So I took a closer look at the specs to see just what was going on. And this is one of those cases where it seems you're gonna get what you pay for. The Econet Bulldog valve boasts a high torque geared motor of 11 pound force feet or 15 Newton meters. That's just a way of measuring torque. The Zemi Smart valve on the other hand states a torque of 40 kilogram force centimeters, which converted equals only 2.9 pound force feet or 3.9 newton meters so here you can see a clear difference i figured the zimmy smart wasn't as strong as the bulldog but i certainly didn't think the bulldog would have a motor almost four times stronger and that difference there is enough to be a deal breaker for me and maybe you too if you have a water shuttle valve that's pretty easy to open and close then this might not be an issue for you but if you're like me and probably many others out there um, and that valve doesn't open and close so easily, then you're definitely gonna wanna look at the torque of the smart valve that you're buying. I couldn't find the torque listed on the Zimmy Smart website, but it was on the box once I received that. I found a number of these cheaper Zigbee Smart valves over on Amazon that are all very similar to the Zimmy Smart one, many of which didn't list the torque either, or if they did, had a similar low torque rating like the Zimmy Smart. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking into making you know, some type of purchase like this. Now we discussed these official ways you can get HomeKit certified water shutoff valves into your smart home, but what about the other methods that might still do the trick but don't necessarily give you that native HomeKit support? So there are some options to get a water shutoff valve into HomeKit through HomeBridge um, or Hoobs, and for those that don't know, that's just a way to integrate smart home devices into HomeKit that otherwise don't natively support it. Homebridge is usually ran on a Raspberry Pi or other small always on computer. One method actually allows you to integrate this same Econet Bulldog that I used here today only without that Think a Hub, which will save you probably a little bit of money. Uh, but you won't get that native HomeKit support, of course. And for this method, you'd need to use a SmartThings hub since this is a Z-Wave device and then integrate SmartThings with HomeBridge. So there's some more steps and hoops that you know you kind of have to go through there, but this does seem to work. Eric from Modern Day Tech actually did a video on that a while back. So I'll put a link down below in case anyone's interested in that whole SmartThings integration of this. There might be some other non-native Z-Wave controller solutions that might work maybe like Hubitat or things like that that I haven't really explored yet but the only officially HomeKit certified Z-Wave controller right now is that Thinka Z-Wave hub. 
I've also heard a lot of really good things about Flow by Moen. Again, no native HomeKit support on this one, but there is a Homebridge plugin that appears to work, although it's extremely expensive on its own and is probably gonna require a professional installation. But if you got the money, then this might be one to think about also. And there are other, you know, Wi-Fi smart shutoff valves, you know, similar to these that might even work with Homebridge. One thing I really like about both of these valves shown here today is that they are DIY, so I can do everything myself without having to hire a plumber. And while, yeah, it's not necessarily cheap if you go with something like the Ecovac Bulldog, but it's not bad compared to something like that Moen Flow or many others like that. Unfortunately, to accomplish what I've done, you will need that Think of Z-Wave HomeKit Hub, which again, isn't cheap either and still isn't available in the US. Um, if you're in Europe, you can go ahead and get one now and hopefully it'll be available here in the US later this year. Stay tuned because once that's released, I'll probably make a whole video just about that and all the fun Z-Wave stuff we can integrate into HomeKit. And maybe that Zimmy Smart Valve would work for your setup. It works well in HomeKit and everything like that. It just, you know, that motor just wasn't strong enough to turn my shutoff valve all the way. I'm curious to hear from you guys. Have you gotten a water shutoff valve working at HomeKit? And if so, please, please share down below in the comments you know, what you're using, how well it's working for you. With so few options out there for something like this in HomeKit, we can all probably learn from each other and, you know, just love hearing what others are doing. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Big thanks again to Eve for sponsoring today's video. Again, check out that thread enabled water sensor that they sell. Even if you don't set up an automatic water shutoff valve like I've done, just detecting those leaks early and getting notified could end up saving you a lot of money in the event of potential water damage. Subscribe if you haven't already for new HomeKit smart home videos every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.